This week in 3D Archery, we're building a hot box. Hey everybody and welcome to 3D Archery. Alright, we're going to build a hot box. Right? Now, some of you may not know, Greg, what do you need a hot box for? Well, the hot box is built so you can cure epoxy so that it's more heat resistant when building bows, risers, or anything you're using epoxy with. Right? It's real simple. Now, the hot box you're going to see us build today comes from Bingham Products, great archery supplier, and it's part of their bow building series. It's in every catalog. I bought two of them. I bought the long bow and recurve and it's the exact same directions. Right? Now when you build a hot box, first thing you gotta think about is some design considerations, right? And it's the size of the bows you want to build. If you want to build only risers, you don't need such a big hot box. Yeah, it makes sense, right? Why well, build an eight foot long hot box for a 22 inch riser? Right? So that's the first thing you gotta consider. You know, how long are the bows you're going to build? If you're only going to build 60 inch bows, then you don't need an 80 inch box. Alright, so take that into consideration when you're doing up your design. And the second thing you got to figure out is how you're going to heat it. Now, there's basically two ways. You can use incandescent bulbs, or you can use forced air. Alright, and I've done both. I actually took part of my um, work shelf, sealed it off, and made that into one, and it worked perfectly fine in the, on my bows I built so far. But I did want to build a hot box, and I wanted to film it, and that's why I held off. All right, so those are the main things. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at all the materials, all the tools, and then I'm going to show parts of it to you. I'm not going to do detail, but we'll talk about it and show you scenes of it, of how we built this hot box. All right, everybody, so the first thing we're going to start off with is the materials you're going to need to build this box. First thing you're going to need is some exterior grade plywood. You're going to need them by 4 by 8 sheets, half inch thick minimum, all right? You're going to need two of those. That's going to cost you about, depending on which ones, I mean, this is a hard one, but for me it costs $55, all right? I didn't buy top of the line, I didn't buy the bottom, I bought some basic ones. You're going to need one 2 foot by 2 inches, one 2 by 2, right, for support. You're going to need one box of one inch grabber screws. That's going to cost us about six bucks. You're going to need four surface mounted light bulb sockets. I would suggest porcelain or the plastic. They're probably the best. They're about five bucks. They're about a dollar each. You're going to need wood glue. It's about three dollars. You're going to need some hinges for the lid. That's going to cost about eleven dollars. You're going to need three handles. About nine dollars. You're going to need eight feet of number 14 insulated wire, which will cost you about 12 bucks. You can need a surface mounted electrical switch, the box and the cover, which is $8, $9, and $3 respectively. You can need a heavy duty cord with plug, which you can take one from your house. It's gonna, if you're not, it's gonna cost you about five, six bucks. You can need a, a roll of aluminum foil. It's about three bucks. You can need some electrical tape, about three bucks. And then you're going to need the twist caps for the electrical wires, which will cost you about a dollar. Now, if you add all that up, that is 50, 5, 60, 69, 80, 89, 101, uh, 104, 107, 108, uh, 111, 119, about 140, 150 bucks. That's a quick estimate right off my head by trying to memorize what I just said. All right. Once you get those materials, you're ready to build. But you need one more thing. Tools. Hmm. All right, now that we know the materials we need, got to get some tools, right? Tools are pretty simple. Um, like anything else, how far into it you want to go is up to you, right? First thing you need, you're going to need a saw. You're going to need a table or a circular saw to cut the plywood. You're going to need a drill to drill the holes. You're going to need a screwdriver to screw in all the screws. 
You're going to need a pair of electrical pliers to cut the wires, pull off the uh, protective coating. You're going to need a staple gun and some staples to attach the aluminum foil. So you can see not a whole lot of tools required and you could probably get away without the staple gun or the staples and things like that. All right? So now we're going to go step by step on how to build an electrical hot box for you. All right, step one is to get the plywood and cut it. Here's the following dimensions that you're going to need. You're going to need two pieces that are 12 inches by 88 inches. This is going to be the top and the bottom of the box. You're going to need two pieces that are 22 inches by 87 inches. This is going to be the front and back of the box. Then you're going to need two pieces that are 12 inches by 22 inches. These are the end pieces of the box. Now, by these dimensions, this is how the instructions in Bingham told you to do it. You would build the box, one giant box, and then when done, you would cut six inches down from the top to create a lid. Now here's the problem that I had. The box is 88 inches long. Putting it up on my table saw, I couldn't stand the box up on end, so I couldn't do it like that. So what I did is on my initial cuts, I cut down, I took off six inches so I could create a lid. So if you don't have the room, keep that in mind that you're going to probably have to do that exact same thing that I just did. Now another thing you can do to get your wood cut is I took it to Home Depot. And they cut the wood into smaller sections for me so I could take it home in my car. Now one thing I found out is that Home Depot and Lowe's will no longer make any cuts under 12 inches. So what I did is I had them cut as close as I could, put them in my little Dodge Journey, and drove them home. Building the box. That's our next step. The key to building this box is to remember the two end pieces, the 12 by 22 inch sections, are the outermost pieces of wood. In other words, the front and back sections go on the inside of the, out, of the ends of the box. They press up against it to form a giant U. And then all you do is you put the front section on the inside of one end, screw it in, repeat it for the back, and you got a giant letter U. Then you take the other end piece, screw it on, and you should have a giant rectangle. It is really just that easy. The next thing you do is you're going to attach the top or bottom sections. Then you repeat the process for the lid if you're going to cut it separately. Now that we got a box, it's time to assemble it. First thing you do is using the hinges, you're going to attach the lid to the body by screwing in the hinges. Up next, we're going to attach the handles. Now in the instructions it says you put one handle on each end and one on the top. I found the one on the top doesn't work well, so what I did is I relocated it to the front of the lid, so this way here when I open it up, I can easily grab it and use it to close it. One thing I did, because I noticed how loose my lid was, was I took sections of two by two and put it on the back of the box to make a stop. So if you open up the lid too fast or if it's hanging there or something hits it, it won't tear off and it'll give it support. The next step is pretty simple. Once you got your box built, you want to insulate it. Now what they recommend using is aluminum foil. You put it in there and to secure it in place, you staple it. I'm going to tell you right now, the aluminum foil tears easily. Not the easiest thing to work with. But it does do the job. I am looking at using thin uh, foam insulation. That might be for another day. But make sure you insulate the box, get all corners and everything to keep the heat in so it works a lot more efficiently. With our box now built and insulated, the bottom section, we're going to install the lights. All right, now, a couple things. You want incandescent bulbs, and what you want to do is space this out evenly, but you want to start by spacing it. If you're going to use a thermostat, 
by installing the thermostat first and making sure the first light is at least 12 to 14 inches away from it. Then you space the others out like that. Multiple ways to play with it, but make sure you spend a little bit of time thinking about that. When you wire the lights, I just daisy chained them. I wired one light. The first one comes from the, the plug, and I've wired from the plug to that light, that light to the next light, all the way down to the final light. Right? One thing you're going to have to do is cut a hole in the side of the box to slide your wires through. You're going to have to connect those wires to the light switch if you want to use that. What I simply did was I made it either on or off. I connected my wires straight to the plug that goes into the wall. Then you install your bulbs, wrap the aluminum foil on the top, and then your final step is to test your setup and see how it works. And the final step is to clean everything up and get it set up. You know it's working, you got it all set up. What I did is I went out and bought some aluminum foil seal tape and I did all my edges in that and I made sure it's all done. And if you got any light cracks, you can go out and buy some window foam, insulation foam, put it around there to seal the lid and the body, and that's it. All right, there you have it everybody, one heat box. Pretty simple build, straightforward. I ran into no obstacles. The hardest part for me was the electrical because I don't do it. I know positive, negative, don't touch, don't cross. Pretty simple, right? But just, it's the fact of not knowing, but it was easy. I figured everything out, got it built. Time, how long did it take? Two to three hours max. I took my time, I wasn't in a hurry, right? So if you need a hot box, they are actually pretty easy to build. And now you got a video, these directions from Bingham, who I give a lot of credit to. Everything I've gotten from them has been quality and has worked exactly like they said. So I hope you liked the video. Now you can build your own hot box and make yourself some top quality risers and make archery your own. All right? Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you next time with an all new episode, 3D Archery.